Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to uh, another talk. Uh, and this is going to be a walk through the Zodiac uh, with the Tarot. Uh, as many of you can see, I've got Richard Swatton here with me. So today is the 20th of October, currently around half past one in the afternoon. Um, a bit of a grey Sunday here. <laughs> um, so... Yeah. And we've both, got, we've both got colds. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so today we are talking about uh, the death card in, uh, in the tarot. We'll also be exploring uh, Scorpio uh, as a sign, uh, how the, the two kind of cross over, where the, the, the meeting point is, um, and really kind of opening up uh, a dialogue on all of those things. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen Richard before, uh, he's uh, an amazing lecturer and astrologer. Uh, he was actually one of my tutors at the London School of Astrology, uh, has a very, very um, broad uh, and deep knowledge of the the subject uh, among many others so Richard please if you uh, would introduce yourself yes well uh, you've said it all really I'm a psychotherapist um, been a psychotherapist since 94 and I will call myself a depth psychotherapist um, and by that I mean looking at the unconscious dimensions of uh, a person's motivations and problems that doesn't mean to say that um, everybody I see has to go into a full length seven year depth psychoanalysis. As, as a professional, I see different things um, in my practice. Some people come and go in 12 weeks. Some people um, are still with me after eight years because they're exploring their psyche in depth. Um, but that's my preference. I'm also an astrologer. And for um, a while anyway, in my spiritual development, I passed through a, a phase of working with the Western mystery tradition um, uh, uh, and and uh, then I went on to meditation and um, certain content. And now I'm interested in certain contemplative traditions in, in, in my own practice. So both a psychotherapeutic practice and a, a kind of a, a, an accompanying spiritual element too, by which I mean to say working for an, an ultimate stage of realisation. Mm. Uh, I don't think we ever completely reach it, but we're, well, well, maybe we do. Some people do. Uh, but nevertheless, that's a that's a kind of uh, path that, that I'm on. And I've been doing astrology since the age of 16. And since I'm now 58, uh, I can't calculate because I've got a cold, but it's a hell of a long time. <laughs> OK, awesome. Uh, wow. So, yes, uh, Richard is super knowledgeable. We actually did a, a talk before, uh, mm. which is called Astrology versus Tarot. Uh, really, really great talk. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and it went into some of the stuff that I think people kind of don't see behind what we do, uh, behind tarot, behind astrology. There is uh, obviously a lot of research. There's immersing yourself in the language, uh, the symbology, uh, which mm. is a really important part of what we do. Um, so mm. we are on the precipice of Scorpio season. Yes. And, uh, it's a brilliant place for us to start to talk about the death card in tarot. Mm to talk about Scorpio as a sign uh, and their rulerships as well, which I think is going to be really important. Again, Richard's going to delve into the symbology of, of this and, and we're going to kind of uh, unpick and unpack some of it, which I'm really excited about. Um, one of the things that we were musing on before is uh, this idea. Um, and obviously, you know, it's, it's been a, a big part of the human evolution uh, mm. to, to keep ourselves alive, to keep us uh, living longer, to keep mm. us, um, you know, growing and expanding and mm. to stop us dying out as a species. Right. Mm. Uh, however, I, I personally, I feel like we might have gone a bit too far with it. And we've kind of turned death into this monstrous thing that um, that seems, you know, hard and cold and unnatural. And mm -hmm. you know, interestingly enough, recently I was re-listening to a talk, as we said, by Alan Watts. Uh, and in mm -hmm. there, he said, you know, you d although birth is painful for both mother and child, it's, a, you know, almost like a traumatic process. Yeah. Um, there's nothing unnatural about it. Uh, our lives eventually, you know, hopefully later rather than sooner come to an end uh, and there is you know that's what ties us into the natural world i believe anyway it's what gives us this um connection to to nature to the natural world and it also 
it makes it worth living. You know, if, if it kind of just went on, I don't think human beings would do much. I don't think we would push to strive uh, as much as we do. But yes, to, to kind of demystify that process and, and to talk about it. And what better time to do it in Scorpio than Scorpio season? Uh, we're just coming up to the 31st of October or Sawain as it's known uh, in the old traditions. What um, was that word? Sawain. So, I haven't heard of that. Or some people call it Samhain. Um, but yeah, it's it's all the same. But one of the things I find really interesting as well is um, it's con it was considered the end of the year. Yule mm. was actually the beginning of the year. So, you know, Halloween or Sawain was actually known as the end of the year. So really interesting the way that it plays off of that. Um, yes, so, well, it's, it's, it's interesting that October, Oct, of course, is eight. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. since the Julian calendar, which uh, I think shifted things a bit, it's it, or we've decided that um, uh, the the beginning of the year really is 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 is, is, is you see the eight is counted from Aries or from um, yep. you see whereas we we had to to so the tenth month is October officially according to the year but actually in in traditional terms and in symbolic terms that number eight. Um, linked with Scorpio and death is really why Scorpio is in it. It, it, it contains the natural month. Mm -hmm. the, you see, and there's a difference between the natural month and the worked out civilized month of Western societies. Do you yeah. So, so uh, I mean, with the sun enters Scorpio in the next couple of days. And um, as I want to say sometimes about Scorpio, somebody has to represent the, uh, the process of decay. Um, it's not a very pleasant thing to talk about, um, but nevertheless, decay is as much part of the survival cycle as is new life. Absolutely. And, and when the leaves fall off the trees and uh, we enter the season of autumnal gold and uh, beautiful season in many ways, mm. um, what happens is that the, the leaves, they decay, they turn into mulch and they turn into food for the tree during, during the process of winter. It's a preparation for that. Yeah. That process of slow decay or a recognition of death in the face of life is behind the sign of Scorpio. Liz Green has talked, when the sun is in Scorpio, when the sun is in the eighth house, I mean, it's often she, she talks about the dragon fight. The, you know, and, and, and in mythology, especially in Freudian psychology, they, they talk about the two basic instincts. Uh, the Jungians don't kind of like this, but I, I do. Um, that there's an instinct, Freud reckoned, between, uh, of death mm -hmm. and an instinct for life. One is called Eros, mm -hmm. which is more than a cherub that strikes you and, uh, you know, if you strike you with it with a thing and you fall in love. <laughs> Eros, it meant just the whole of life. You know, mm. life, the sun, the eros, it meant relating with everything. You come into a material body, or spirit does, and then you're, you're subject to, to all of this. Mm. So it's a drive towards life, or the enhancement of libido. Whereas yeah. Thanatos, which is the god of death, and he has a brother called Hypnos, mm. which of course is just a kind of, hip, you know, behind hypnosis, you can kind of go into a trance state, a kind of living death. Um, which is to do with enlightenment, you know, uh, Gurdjieff said that we're all asleep and uh, one of the things is we have to wake us up. So whether you see Hypnos or Thanatos is the, actual, the god of actual death or the drive to which we are moving towards. There's a drive in us to destroy the very fabric of our material existence. Yeah, and, and that, that, that is represented by Scorpio. So Liz Green calls it the dragon fight because it's St. George and the dragon. It's the sun which is St. George, the hero, you know, battling over the god of death and, and decay. But as you said, the, the, the whole process of de de death and transformation has been given a bad press. We've turned it into a horror. It, I, I think one of the Christian traditions really turned death into hell. Mm. It's, a, it's a vehicle of punishment and it's something that we must make up for in our life. Uh, actually, hell comes from the word... Yeah, they, in the St. James Burger, or they, they use the word Hades, uh, yeah. uh, taken over from the Greek. But I'm just saying that the death that we're talking about is an inevitability. It's as much part of the life cycle. If nothing dies, 
then nothing can be reborn. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it rules over the elimination system, mm. Pluto and Scorpio, you know, in, in physical terms. We have to get rid of waste material. And Pluto transits at core are about getting rid of what is unnecessary to the evolution of either your individual's life or the collective. So although we don't like getting rid of things, belief systems, the way we've been old behaviors that have been ingrained, um, the way we view things, or even our location where we are. Pluto yes. transits often bring a kind of inevitability to an end. So Sun and Scorpio have all of this mythic theme inside of them and they're particularly attuned to what is going to uh, cause them or fear uh, a, a kind of lack of survival. So th these people are attuned at a very instinctual level towards um, that process of life, those things which could destroy. Now, depending on how they deal with it, um, depends on th their character. Some people hate it and then pit themselves up against life as if nothing's going to, you know, there is a stubborn fixed sign, right? Nothing's going to take me down. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to become the best that I can. And I, I'm not going to let anybody in. Not really. So there's a fear of intimacy often. A desire for intimacy. But when you fuse with another, whether it's through sex or whether it's through deep emotional involvement, you lose part of your individuality. Yeah, it's a, a form of... You see, yeah. and, and that's a fear. Fear of letting go. So Scorpio is an inherent um, a paradox. It wants the depth but the depth means the loss of various identities through our, through our progressions and our development. And, but they fear the loss as well. <laughs> so they've got a bad time, but there's a bad press for them, but uh, it, inevitably they are, they're trying to bring light to the darkness of life. And whether that's an interest in occult or psychotherapy or a spiritual interest, one way or another, that inherent pattern lies with, as the sun moves into Scorpio. Yeah, no, I, I think as well, it kind of that really highlights when you say it that way. For me, anyway, it really highlights the whole uh, Phoenix aspect of Scorpio, <laughs> you know, where they, they transcend whatever um, perceived darkness, uh, you know, is experienced or had or, had or held uh, and turn it into something else. And it's interesting you mention as, as well about the um, to, to join with another, to merge with another. You do. It's the same with, uh, you know, with, with relationships. Uh, in order to be with somebody else, something about your inherent nature has to give way, uh, you know, because you, you, otherwise it doesn't work, right? That's the whole mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of, uh, and I remember reading this, um, in Elizabethan times, sex was, was called dying and how uh, the French use the, the word le petit mort, like the, the little death for orgasm yes. and stuff. Which, and again, you know, very sort of Scorpio uh, type themes as well in terms of like the taboos and stuff. Um, but it's very true. And I think one of the things that people kind of forget about those things, especially when you uh, merge or, you know, interact with somebody else is there is a level of your psyche that goes through... Um, a small death, so to speak, because you can't remain as you are. You have to change. And, you know, hopefully if it's, um, if it's going the way that it should and it resonates at the right level, you transcend the self that you were in yeah. order to become a better person and you and your partner are then more enriched for it. Um, yeah, they're, they're very, very interesting. And well, it's at its own play, on its own plane of a kind of physical, emotional um, absorption in, in the experience, not with one another, but mm. there's an experience that is shared and, and temporarily the ego is dissolved, the ego, the identity, because there's a kind of sensate, a physical pleasure, which hopefully um, en engulfs the whole body. I mean, we could talk about Wilhelm Reichs, um, who was a great, psychotherapist stemming from Freud, talked talk, talk, talk about, about the total orgasm, right? Um, it, 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 you know, almost a Kundalini experience in, in which what he was trying to do was um, uh, integrate all of the, um, the parts of the body. Mm -hmm. um, there's the head, which tends to be separated from the neck, 
and the chest, which separate, tends to be separated from the power centers and the sexual centers, and then the lower part seems to be. So his interest was was integrating the whole lot in order to achieve, uh, and he, he believed a lot in the the sexual experience as 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 an attempt to integrate everything, and and um, uh, and sometimes people don't. They don't let fully go. I'm not saying I'm the master of Tantra. Um, <laughs> it, takes a, it, takes, it takes a long while to reveal yourself, which again is to do with Pluto, it's to do with the, the card of death. Mm -hmm. It's about you're going to be revealed to some mystery beyond yourself. And if you can experience that in, in sexual, you're, you are healed. But it's only at the emotional level. Um, it's, not a, it's not a transformation of consciousness which lasts which is why people are drawn time and time again to good sexual experiences. Yeah. Whether they, yeah. Whether they have those with uh, attempt that with drugs or not, there's, there's another facet we could explore, but that's a, um, it's a false path because it, 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 the, the, the sensate experience is so powerful. You're drawn back into trying that again and again and again, and it doesn't yeah. actually transform anything. It keeps you hooked on the same experience. So we have to take the symbolic element of that sexual experience and say that is, it can be healing on a, on a physical and emotional level, but at the mm. same time, it is a representation of a higher order of transformation. Absolutely. I think I, some really, really awesome things that you touched on there um, is the, the, the part about the, you know, Wilhelm Reich wanting to integrate this whole uh, experience. Yeah that point or the, the you know the the body orgasm is a point at which uh, the the ego is completely dissolved right the, this idea of me myself and just that as separate to everything else it kind of disappears it has to um and you know so again we're, we're looking at that kind of but that's frightening uh, it, it can yeah, that's be frightening people. because because there are, especially if they're at a level where they're not uh, ready for the experience, which is like you said, where the, the whole thing with you know, people using drugs and stuff, I think it really holds back because it's not a pure experience. It's not coming from a place of um, preparation, so to speak. And interestingly enough, a lot of the mystery traditions uh utilize that you know and they worked and trained for it for a long time to to utilize sexual energy in such a way um you know in in a way that it was actually transcendental and actually uh yes. something that, was in life. that is that is a path in life it's to do with kundalini yoga and uses the energetic um experience if you like to lead to a a transformation of consciousness mm -hmm um that's specific <coughs> excuse me Ooh. that's a specific path in in life i mean it's uh tricky because uh, most of us would, would just want to engage the um the the, the the pleasurable experience of merging and then uh, go at it again as soon as possible but um but they don't they they they're, they're trying to transform the very energies mm. and it's again this symbol of uh, the the phoenix is interesting it's an Egyptian symbol. It, it represents, however, the 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 transformation of the end of a cycle, mm. uh, and and it's a willing sacrifice of the bird. It's it's yet another. It's a it's a kind of god that that sacrifices. You know, it's the end of a yuga or an aeon, and it, it it goes willingly into the fire. Transformation by fire is an ultimate transformation of form. Yeah, it's true purification. Uh, uh, absolutely. It, it, there, there, there's no going back after a transformation of fire. Yeah. I, I have often liked the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. There's various types of transformations, but the images are different. Mm. Neptune soaks you to death. <laughs> so that you're merged with everything. Mm. You know, Uranus breaks you apart in little pieces. Mm. hopefully to put you back together so it's, it's a kind of bang and you feel all separate dissociated and so on but pluto ultimately transforms the the material substance there's no going back after pluto yes. it, it's the ultimate in in purification and the destruction of the fall and then it turns into smoke of some kind and that rises to heaven and, mm. uh, uh, and so on. so there are different different transformation processes uh, uh, inherent, uh, with, with, at least in the symbology. Whereas in the card of death, 
you you just get that one symbol so what we're trying to do here is associate the the tarot with astrology and how they can how can, how they can dialogue if you like so yeah. but knowing the archetypal background the connections the the, the images the uh, the things to do with um that word the 13th card of the zodiac you know 13 yeah. which is circle the which is uh, coven is 13 the 13 months of the year to do with the moon it's it's all very um to do i think with the mysteries of the physical because scorpio is opposite taurus it's the it's the end of form what happens after form itself is destroyed so i think these are uh, it's more pagan than anything else it's the mysteries of the moon the last cycle of the moon all of that kind of stuff comes into um scorpio yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that I love uh, about the tower aspect is uh, when you look at the death card, um, you know, and it, again, it, it's got a very bad rap because when people see it, it kind of, you know, maybe pokes something primordial in them. Um, which is interesting as well, given that Scorpio rules the eighth house, you know, and this this card, this card, the death card, which I'm ah, yes. Sure, Many are uh, familiar with has that's the weight deck, isn't it? Yes, and that that's interesting because he he rides a horse. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, again, this is that in itself kind of speaks volumes about mm. many things. Uh, one thing that I wanted to to go back on slightly, um, mm. you talked about the the death of form, and it's really interesting that it is the thirteenth card. One and three give you four. Uh, four in the tarot is the emperor, uh, which represents the sign of Aries. Um, in classical astrology, both of those signs were ruled by Mars, which again is a, an interesting interplay. Well, one of the other things that uh, I kind of like about that, so you've got the death card representing the transformation or the, the culmination of the physical, uh, the physical life. Mm -hmm. And then on the opposite end of it with its number four, the emperor, is where the zodiac begins right it represents the birth how we come into the world how we are you know presented so to speak uh, and yeah. it's very much about the beginning of life so you get this kind of whole um uh, <laughs> you know just in two cards you get this whole kind of idea of balance and two halves of a whole so to speak even though they're different modes different elements in terms of their astrology mm -hmm. uh, they still have that link and the emperor would be the the outward self and the death card would be you know the inward self that again like you were talking about the inner transformation um so some really interesting stuff takes place there um are you drawing a distinction between um things that change on an outer material level like we can gain power and structure or we move house or uh, we change cars or we finished a college course or a relationship those are actual kind of deaths in a way mm. um on a, on an outer level um is, is you drawing a distinction between uh, the emperor and 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 the 13th card yes uh, so and the reason being um is when you simplify in numerology the 13 would give you four mm. which is a nod to the emperor i just i've always found yep. it very interesting that uh, and you can do that with all of the major arcana cards they all once you look at them numerology numerologically uh, they give you a hint at their opposite card and they are sort of uh, paired in that respect one thing that you touched on earlier that's interesting uh, which I found was pretty amazing is um, the idea of the skeleton and Saturn. And when yeah. we die, obviously your flesh kind of decays, but your uh, skeleton survives for years. And of course, what rules your skeleton is uh, Saturn. So yeah. I'd really like you to take us into that. It's... Well, in traditional astrology, we're up to the 17th, 18th, 19th century, uh, we didn't have the outer planets. Mm and that that's representative of um that there was only uh, seven planets and and that we didn't have access generally to um uh, uh, understanding things on a, a more metaphysical or transcendent level now that's not totally true because people like plato plotinus uh, christ buddha 
um, uh, uh, other key figures, uh, maybe even Dr. John Dee, I don't know, uh, but uh, other figures have a, in, in philosophy and uh, uh, religious, uh, the, the religious schools, and shamanism particularly is, the, is I think, the basis of most religions, because that's the oldest form mm. um, uh, of, 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 of uh, experience of transcendent reality. Uh, Taoism doesn't go back that far. Shintoism may do. Hinduism doesn't. But th there's a, a, a gods and goddesses of change and transformation. Uh, shamanism is the root at it. But um, um, in general, when the outer planets come into uh, uh, come into being astrologically, we 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 have more and more access to steps beyond the ego. So Saturn has always represented the end of the line, the end of form, because Saturn is, is the ultimate in, in incarnation. You know, in alchemy, it's, it's lead. It's the basest, solid, most material um, form of existence. I mean, in astrology, if you, you know, alchemy just sees life is divided is into a spectrum. There's sun, gold, silver, tin, or copper, and these are all represented by the seven planets. So they're material. They're, they're they're different forms of life in acting. Like, rather like the sun is a spectrum, you know, in, in different colors. Mm. So Saturn represented the end of the line. So in traditional astrology, it represented death, the end of something, the end of form, um, or or for that matter, the the most the most densest form. That's where it gets spirituality. So immateriality, it can clearly die. Materiality, when we come here, for some reason, maybe an alchemical reason, um, we, we, we have full access to all of the levels of consciousness, including the material. Mm. Now, what we do with the material, because it, it dies and it decays, it's not subject, if you like, to the ideas of greater transcendence. This is this is this is partly resolved in how do we deal with the problem of matter? Let's call it evil. Let's call it you know. Uh, even Sri Ramana Maharshi, the Advaita tradition, said we must be able to leave the body. The, the body must be sidelined. Um, in alchemy, it's a bit of a contradiction. In Christianity, uh, the body transcends after Christ's death. It, it transcends in a different form. So there's a deep mystery in Christianity about. Uh, the value of the body institutionalized christianity is a different thing altogether <laughs> I, I mean the buddhists you know when a person dies they just they they they, they take them out to the top of the hill and uh, let the vultures get at them mm. i mean because they 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 you know they rep even that life can be transformed into birds you know with birds and birds are spiritual forces mm. i'm wandering off no, um, I love it. And it's, it's but, really is a perfect thing. And I think there's going back to this idea of, uh, you know, turning death into this monster and, you know, like this whole idea in the West, we embalm bodies and paint them to make them look like they're still alive. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, because, uh, I mean, cryogenics, which is the, um, you know, in the States, I mean, it cost it used to, in the 1970s, it would cost you 150,000 or something. God knows what it is now. Yeah. Um, you know, Timothy Leary had his head chopped off and put into some kind of helium filled um, stuff just in case they could bring us back. This is all a very scientific view. Um, I mean, can, you, can, can you imagine if they actually did it in 300 years? Uh, a, a person born in the 20th century, you know, I mean, going to come out in the 20th. How would they adapt? They wouldn't have the anyway. I think <laughs> what I really like about uh, you, you know you bringing that up is, and I think people actually need to consider these things. Uh, this whole idea of our bodies decaying and going back to the earth, yeah. for me, ties you into the idea of immortality. You know, if your body is being eaten by other species of earth that are going to go on to become other things and then feed that cycle, it ties you into the cycle of the earth. Yes. Whereas this idea of embalming yourself and being buried in a casket and stuff, it actually cuts you off. And yeah, all right, fair enough. Your soul, I, I believe that your soul doesn't stay in your body. But for your body to go back to the earth, which it's formed from, uh, is an important part of the process and the cycle. I really yes. believe that. Yes. Well, in the in the Egyptian traditions, they used to think that the immortality of the body was important. 
um, so that the soul could reincarnate as the bar <laughs> or car. You see, so so they have their various, but that's a very sun-oriented religion. Mm. Ra or Ta, the power Ta was the power behind the sun. The sun was Ra, and so it was a it was a kind of worship of the life force. Predated Christianity by a couple of thousand years. You know the the sun uh, or worship, um, uh, but what it devalues is the material, the great mother. Mm. It devalues the whole cyclic system of death and rebirth, and it devalues the feminine, um, that, that, that it has its part to play and that we are a material body. Now, whether we like it or not, there is an initiation experience mm -hmm. of which Pluto and Scorpio represent, an initiation through the gradual mortification of our own body, the gradual de uh, decay of the leaves. And we're the leaves on trees, you know, we're human beings, you know, in, you know, what do we leave three score and 10 and a bit more now, you know, we're, we're, we're not even a drop on the ocean of eternity. Not really, no, not, not, not in terms of history and so on. Um, the spirit is a different thing. The psyche is a different thing. The psyche is our experience in many ways. So if there's an immortal soul, maybe there is, uh, uh, maybe there isn't, uh, but the psyche tends to act like there is one. Religions create belief systems to show you where it goes or what happens and these are all imaginative ideas about what happens after death they're very very interesting and they are attempts by the mind and the psyche to resolve the anxiety of death but if we could go right back into the symbol of pluto which is the archetypal god of death um she in, in older mythologies in greek mythology anyway it predates Pluto and Hades into the goddess Ananke. Mm. I don't know whether you know this goddess. She used to, she, it was, it was, but it's interesting. And Erich Giegel. And these, god, these are goddesses predating the, mm -hmm. the masculization of, of, of forces. You know, the Greeks, you know, loved the male first, you know. So, uh, Very solar. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so that's why they have all these perfect kind of uh, statues of the of the male, um, you know, uh, perfect form, perfect ideal, very sexual, very attractive, very, you know, uh, <laughs> unique. And, um, you, you, you know, you, uh, idealized uh, statues of the male. But before that, the female deities were in operation and Ananke was the goddess of necessity. Okay. And what necessity was, to, to realize her in our life, which is often the basis of a Pluto transit, mm. is to realize there are certain things that we don't have control over. Yeah. Death being one of them, of course. Death is simply a, a, a larger force that is necessary for the evolution of the Earth or the evolution of the cosmos, and that all things die, including our sun. In 53, 56 billion years' time, the sun will no longer exist. That's been worked out by science. There's an inevitable end. And that is called, that was imagined as necessity. And we don't like her because in our, in our consciousness, you know, today we like to think we've got control over everything. Cryogenics, you know, soon we'll have immortals and, and so on and we'll be able to live beyond our, beyond our time. Um, Inanki is the necessity of evolution hmm. to do what it must, to do whatever it takes, to evolve, mm. evolve consciousness, evolve uh, uh, the universe, evolve the solar system. And you can see this in Anki, is we must go along with what we have to do. And there's an experience that we have to experience in order to feel complete. And that is the experience of a death of form. So we will have to consciously, or unconsciously, of course, <laughs> go through it in one way or another. And even if, we, even if we manage to prolong life, I doubt very much whether the, the, the life that's so prolonged will want to live very long. I mean, there are great Tibetan lamas that have lived 120, 140 years, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw one online, it was 106 and still doing his, his, uh, his, his not his karate, but his uh, martial arts. Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing battle. Had a voice that was so sonorous you know, he could, you know what I mean? He, he was still, 
you can always tell somebody when the voice is kind of weak, the, the energy is going. I mean, still sauna is still moving about. It's not just to do with diet. I think it's to do with a certain kind of attitude. But absolutely, there are always these exceptions. But necessity is the capacity to accept that there are larger cycles of evolution going on. Call them yugas, call them aeons, and that these are enacting within us as a individuals. Individuality is negligible compared to these larger cycles. And uh, there's, a, there, there's a disinclination with the control of science and, uh, and all that. If we can only understand things, we can become immortal. Yeah. We only become immortal when we're dead. That's interesting. We become oh, immortal oh, as a spirit yes. in life, but not when we're actually embodied. So I think this whole thing you talk about, initiation through Scorpio, initiation through realizing that we have a limited time within the material body, Mm -hmm. And that that is in itself, in all religions, all religions, death is at the center. We must contemplate it in order to become awake. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's such a beautiful point that you make as well. And I think this is the problem as well nowadays when, you know, you, if you say that to somebody, it's like, oh, don't be so morbid. And it's like, but it's a part of, of, of the life that we live, you know, and the life that is eventually going to come to its natural end. Uh, again, to go back to this idea of the, the emperor uh, and Aries okay. and, and the death card yeah. as well, uh, birth and death. They're two halves of exactly the same thing. You have one life, right? That, well, in terms of your physical self, I believe you have one life. Um, but on either end of that, so like two bookends, so to speak, you have your birth and you have your death. Mm. They're both natural phenomena yeah. of coming to the, the, the earth school, so to speak. Mm. Um, what I really like about what you said is it, it really is... Um, something that is worth contemplating it is uh, and i think I, and I read this as well that it's too monstrous to 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 think that death has no meaning that that's it that after we die that's it it just ends and i think that is a big part of what really scares people it's what stops them thinking about it and talking about it. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, you know, if, even for for atheists who, you know, they don't believe in God, they don't believe in it, and, and you know, the the fear and the anxiety that is conjured up in them when you talk about the event of death uh, comes from a very real place, and it's because, in my personal opinion, some part of them knows that this is not it. Uh, even the skeleton that's left behind, right, your flesh days weeks right it just kind of goes your skeleton and the fact that it's left behind you know it's got that saturnian element to it because it will yes. hints at that idea that some part of you will continue to live on if your bones can survive that long then the part of you that is pure essence mm -hmm. is eternal right it, it will continue to to thrive and to grow um again but really really interesting stuff and this whole idea about controlling it i mean when you look at scorpio and the eighth house and you know people talk about power dynamics and you know who has the control and who doesn't have the control and you see a lot of modern astrologers will talk about that stuff um it's just a, a really all i just must say all of the so-called transpersonal signs mm. also known as the collective signs are from libra through to pisces and they all represent um, a confrontation of the individual ego with the other, the other side of things. Yeah. So death starts in Libra. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of death. We, 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 we see death of form in Scorpio. But in Libra, Libra calls you to realize that there is other people. There are other people in the world. There are other individuals with whom you can relate. And if you don't do that, you're just on your own. The first six signs are to do with individual development, you see. Mm. And, uh, uh, and that's not wrong. They're, they're, they're trying to um, uh, clearly differentiate what the individual is. But from Libra, there's the death of Aries. Yes. yes. Aries is, the, is, the sing is, is, is a representation of the existence of a singular individual, a mm. cell in the whole. And the right to exist... I exist, says Lee. 
<laughs> it doesn't have a form yet. It hasn't moved into to, to Taurus, but it, it has a power. And so it's always interested in instant things. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's boring. You know, things are boring. You know, the new, the fresh, you know, it's very airy. It's very, very spring. But it's interesting, all the spring gods like Adonis and, and all that, they die early. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because, because they only represent that, that, anyway, the instantaneousness. So I don't want to go all the way through them. You can, you can check yeah, them out. No, they, I, I'm, they're I'm they're happy individual happy. components of the, of the development of a, a seed, a bird, an individual sun, whatever it is. It's the Libra, to, to, the to sun goes it. down. It's the sunset. It's the sunset of the dawn which means there is another side. So this other side, we begin death in Libra. And it's interesting, the sign of Libra used to be in the constellation of Scorpio. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, you yeah. see, it's only about 2,000 years old, is Libra. Mm. Um, because or, because it's, the, it's the southern claw. But it used, mm. so it just used to go Virgo into Scorpio. And they differentiated it when human justice and civilization, then instead of just being... Uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You know that that kind of law of right and wrong. Reason. There was this. There was this kind of sign of justice coming. Is that that we could perhaps judge people on different levels? It's a very uh, intellectual, idealistic uh, uh, sign, um, but it still represents that there is a transpersonal law going on, and mm. the, the individual is subject to it. So, if you want to relate, see, so Scorpio is 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 you know. Sagittarius is the death of, of what we know as an individual, which is uh, a Gemini. Mm. Do, do, do you see, we have a personal home in, in, in um, Cancer, but we have an outer home or a profession that we're, we're, we're seeing in the collective. Capricorn represents what our profession are, are set up in the material world as an individual, rather than belonging to a, a family group in Cancer. We belong to uh, a, a, a a position, a status, or all. Aquarius is the same, opposite Leo. Leo is the sign of the individual creativity, and mm -hmm. Aquarius is the sign which represents the the, the creative, the whole of creativity of mankind. Mm. How do you deal with that? You know, in an individual, it's it's a problem. So, some yeah, it has its moments. I can assure you. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I in order to in order to fulfil myself as an individual, I need to know everything. Mm. So you're, yeah, that's the problem with the sun in Aquarius. You see, it's, <laughs> sun is individual, and Aquarius is is a collective, uh, is is a collective sign, and and the same for Pisces. You you synthesize everything in 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 Virgo, but then ultimately it melts away into the sea of of oblivion or the 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 total mass, if you like, of the whole collective existence, which is Pisces. So. Mm -hmm. All of the individual, all of the signs represent death, but Scorpio is a special one. It represents the death of form, and in one way or another, we have to experience that. And there's an initiation into that. And okay. interestingly enough, in, in in astrological sense, I know I'm going on, but no, 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 it's Sagittarius comes after it. Sagittarius, therefore, is the hope of something beyond death, mm. and and astrology tells us that. That's why it's called the sign of religion or, uh, you know, a, an attempt to, 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 to move beyond, um, beyond death. And, and so we, all the signs are a representation of a, a sequence of experiences. Absolutely. And, 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 and therein lies um, heaven, uh, religion, metaphysics, all of those things, you know, journeys journeys of exploration, uh, mental knowledge, uh, 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 meditations, priests, all of the, you know, all of that, something beyond us. Sagittarius's arrow goes up into the heaven, but unfortunately it always comes down to the earth. It, it, <laughs> it will have to come back down at some point. Yeah. And I would say that that number four is the number of materiality. It's the four elements. It, it consolidates. So there is something Connected to this emperor, and 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 um, I, I I don't know the symbology of the tarot that well, but um, um, I love unfolding on Scorpio at the moment and Pluto, and Pluto is 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 the end of a cycle. It's the transformational cycle. It's the food that's been intaken. It's 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 all of its nutrients has been done, and then it moves into the lower colon, and then into the colon, and the word colon. That, do you know what it means? Mm. The canal of the dead. Oh, wow. 
See, so even physiologically, we have this idea that there is a process of death and decay and it needs eliminating. And when we have a Pluto transit, something in it has come to an end. Mm. And if we don't get rid of it, we will die of its fumes, of its toxins. And anybody watching, and I've had this, uh, uh, you know, constipation many, many years ago, couldn't get rid of it. It's the most horrific thing because you poison yourself from the inside out yeah and yeah. this is where we come back to this idea of fearing death i'm sure everybody fears it i mean i'm not exactly um, exalted by the <laughs> prospect um but 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 all religions say that there's an initiation into that phase of life yes Hesity, who rules over the dark moon she's interested in that Very and, you know and it's interesting that we shove death into these into these uh, feminine deities you know and, and again is this conspiracy of mythology to put it all at the fault of the material world what it means but i think this Absolutely. this idea of um, the end of a cycle the getting rid of something including ourselves mm -hmm. is necessary for the evolution of things that come after us and that we've played our part and we may evolve we may not depending on the level of consciousness that we've reached we might go into the bardo rounds and as the Tibetan book of the living and dying says, we, we pop there and then some forces or energies decide whether we've reached a, a stage where we can go forward or a, a, a reach a stage where we have to come back as a rat or something. <laughs> yeah, those are, I mean, those are really interesting concepts. And this idea of initiation is one that I wanted to touch back on as well. And I really like the, the, the way that you put that forward. Um, to, and just to backtrack ever so slightly, this whole thing about uh, Libra being, you know, where, where death really starts mm. um, and it being, you know, the, the, the transpersonal and, and the, yes. the realm of the other. Uh, it means literally across from the personal. There is a sunrise in which everything comes into being and there's a sunset in which the sun is about to meet the dark forces of life yeah absolutely which it, it gives uh, it really made me think of a line in a film um it's about a vampire actually so perfect for the season <laughs> yeah yeah uh, he actually says, uh, you know, one of the th one of the hardest things that you'll ever learn as an immortal. So we touched on this as well is um, learning to deal with the cold, dark wasteland of eternity. And that really struck a chord with me because I was like, wow, OK, so, you know, forget the fact that it's a film. Uh, what's it called? Suspension yeah. of disbelief. OK, let's think about that and, and unpick it. If you were immortal, that is something very real that you would face. And, you know, there's this girl, she's, you know, like completely besotted with him and she says you know i love you i want to be with you and he says but you're beautiful to me because you're human your short years are what give your life meaning yeah. and that really hit home with me like even now i just got a shiver up my spine as i said that because it makes oh, yeah. a lot of sense you know it gives that validation to the experience that we have and and i think one of the things that i'm loving about this talk is that it's open and it's frank and it's honest and i think it's important for us to to be accepting of this as an event that is going to accompany us all. I myself, I mean, when I was younger, I used to, there were times where I really thought about death a lot. And I wasn't afraid of the fact that I was going to die because I knew that that was something that happened to everybody. What really, really, excuse my language, but fucking <laughs> felt on me a lot was this idea of, I don't know how it's going to happen. Or when, you know, like, is it going to, is it going to be sudden? Is it going to be painful? Is it going to be long? That was the thing. And I think that's what we collectively struggle with. It's not so much the fact that we're going to die. I think, you know, we've all accepted that on some level. It's just the not knowing how it will happen that really freaks us out. But to, to bring it back to this. Um, but can I pick up on that? Yeah, yeah, please. Because isn't that the whole point? <laughs> Isn't is isn't that 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 you know we, we talk about when you go through a Pluto transit, let's say of the sun or moon or ascent or whatever, or when a death card comes up in a reading, something is passing out of life. Yes. And whether we accept it, we can make it more easy, more graceful. I don't think we, we haven't got a lot of grace about death. We just see it as the enemy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I completely agree with you. I think we've 
we, we we're not allowed to talk about it or this uh, embalming and the, you know I, if ever you've seen um uh what was that to come out of uh, america uh show that i often talk about um uh, 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 alan ball american beauty started it okay uh, no. uh, american beauty if you've seen that was about the the a, a day uh, it's just about a single day and he says uh, what's the opening lines uh, uh, it's it's nice to be um it's nice to wake up and uh not know how the day is going to go because then it's exciting yeah. and and he says there's only one day that you don't know how it's going to go and that's the day of your own death yeah now that's a great it's a great opener alan ball is absolutely great american beauty and there's this there's this guy that's come into the knowledge of that and he's he keeps on going around with his camera exploring different things and how how incredibly beautiful things are yeah. and the, the sign of beauty is taurus it's represented by libra and and when you have awareness of death everything becomes extraordinarily beautiful especially those people i mean those people that jumped off the golden gate bridge to get rid of their life i think there's something like 60 percent of them survived mm -hmm. And and in interviews after them having committed suicide, they all changed. They all changed their understanding of life. They had to go through an initiation. Yes. And halfway down, they changed their mind. Yeah. You see this a lot. Right, right, right. right. So, but the, that's an extreme form <sighs> of, of shamanic initiation to have to go through it. But they all changed and then they all saw life differently. The transformation was absolutely ridiculous yeah you um, see this in uh, in all of the pagan shamanistic traditions uh, yeah. when they go through the process of initiation a part of that is to mimic the death of the old self so that they arise as a new person or as a new being um, with a new understanding of life uh, and also all of the the gifts that human beings truly possess uh, and I think sometimes, you know, the, the, that whole idea, and it's, it's interesting that you brought up the, the Golden Gate survivors, because there's a song um, that's, it's about this guy, and he, he basically says, you know, this is how I woke up, I just wanted to die. And by the time the song finishes, you can hear him saying, like, I actually, you know, I don't want to die. Like, now that I realise that I'm on my way out and I've just done this, it's, it's very, very true. I think mean, you see this a lot with people at the end of life, yeah. Uh, when uh, you know they've got like a, a terminal disease mm -hmm. uh, they become I've seen some people one lady who I actually used to give Reiki to become a shining being you know her body was you know was you know obviously yeah. decaying and it was it yeah. was very hard and very sad to see but inside like the gleam in her eyes it was just like she was like you know what this doesn't define any of it and she just looked on an internal level more radiant the closer she got and that really really stuck with me um and probably always will actually it was well, just, yeah. yes uh, well this uh, i'd just like to finish off the point uh, the last point about experiencing powerlessness mm. which is one of the great themes of pluto trans tr transits isn't that the point that the the, the ego can't control it yeah not not at the very end i mean you can always go to dig <coughs> excuse me dignitas for a dignified end rather than a calamitous one that that's another debate whether that's moral immoral um or, or, you know but there is something at the point where you can't control what happens and the experience of letting go of ego control is, a, is an initiation experience like we were talking about sex a lot of people don't have satisfying sex because they can't really give themselves to the experience they're worried about it <laughs> then they're merged with somebody else you know and uh, am i going to cut you know uh, that, that's it, it gets spread out in all kinds of things mm -hmm. i think the, the swapping of money for example as an attempt to you know taurus scorpio thing as you know people people um, accumulate wealth or power or, or industry and money in order to ameliorate apparently ward off death as soon you know as quick as again uh, that, that, that doesn't work. that doesn't work um what was the second question i i lost my, my lost my way about powerlessness that's the point what was your your next bit i had something um, to say about that it, i think that was it I, what i was trying to highlight is you know as a young person i thought about it a lot and one of the things that really freaked me out more than anything was this idea that i didn't know how it was going to happen and when i got out of my head 
about that uh, and had certain experiences of life in general, um, it really kind of changed. And I think you're right. You, I think you do go through the process as you age of understanding, yes, okay, this is going to happen. So I need to live life at a level that uh, makes it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. I've, I, I'm sure we'll pick it up again. I've, I, I said, I'd just like to go back and then I, the other thought process disappeared. But <laughs> you were talking about the gleam, it, the gleam of life. And um, uh, uh, that, that, that happens. Um, Ram Dass, um, Ram Dass, Aka, Richard Alpert, uh, uh, quite, quite a, a leading um, figure, not a guru figure, but a, a, a teacher, a kind of pundit in, in these matters. Uh, excellent. He, um, he set up a whole thing for a little while about seeing people through the phases of death and um, how they encounter it, uh, how they experience it. Mm. You know, Elizabeth Kubler Ross used to do. Uh, uh, she, she encountered people with the, of, of fatal diseases, and you know there are five stages of dying: mourning and loss. We shouldn't underestimate the human, uh, the, the the encounter with human suffering in it. Um, I don't think a mere idea uh, of of something beyond, if you like, is going to ameliorate mourning and grief, especially for those people left behind because they experience things emotional loss and so on but that's not the end of the story that's the point mm. it's not that this uh, and and all um they say in the buddhist tradition that the last teacher is the last teacher in this incarnation is death yeah i saw it i, I was remember watching a um a documentary about something and i think it was near death experiences I and mean, yes yeah. i said um mm -hmm. On, he said, you know, on, on my headstone, I want written, gone to learn the final secret. Mm. And I just thought, wow, yeah, you know, it, it really is that. You know, you talk about it being a, a teacher uh, and this idea of Scorpio and secrecy and stuff, like gone to learn the final secret just absolutely hit it on the head for me because I thought, well, yeah, that's very plutonian scorpionic it has that element because you know the whole thing about secrecy and stuff i mean and to to take it back i think you're right all of the things that we experience when i, I lost a nan this year all right uh watching that was was very difficult um and seeing the people that have been left behind you know my family my, my dad especially was you know was really really distraught and that was really hard um but my understanding that there is something else, I can't define it for everybody. I'll never be able to, to make everybody believe what I know, mm. but I know it. And so while it wasn't an easy experience to have, and it's, you know, there's still moments now where, you know, I'll remember something or I'll find a recipe and I'll be like, oh, you know, that reminds me of Nan. Um, those things are very real. And I think you're right. You, you do go through the stages of it. But what is eternal one of them one of them is anger that's that's it, at the loss of her daughter uh, um demeter persephone is her daughter mm. and um she's the daughter is abducted by pluto mm. or hades comes yeah. up from the underworld and he he uh, ever since they they fought the battle of the the titans the the, the um the, the the new lot zeus and his brother pluto and hades um uh, the Hades was given the mask of invisibility and total control and total rule over death. So, although he wasn't as powerful as Zeus, um, he he his his law was irrevocable. The, you, you know, and that was stated in the in the kind of the Greek idea of death. Um, ah, interesting. Yes. So it, it, there's an irrevocability. The disinclination to experience loss, loss, mourning grief can produce an enormous rage but this is the rage of life or or the ego against the powers of forces which are larger than us or necessity yes. and now however you reconcile that difference however you reconcile the uh, balancing number between thanatos and eros or 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 uh, an anki and uh, uh, the sun or uh, horus the god of the horizon versus versus set 
which is where the sun sets. We're, we're back again about to uh, life and death. Um, both were, were, were given value. They, they became devalued as blackness and darkness and, and, uh, and all that uh, in, in, in mythology. Um, but it is the reconciliation of it, I think, in your own mind and in your own being. Um, I wouldn't say that loss of relationship, loss of emotional attachment, is ever going to be that acceptable. Right, mm -hmm. it's not acceptable to experience uh, uh, those those things because uh, human life, in many ways, is a, is a series of attachments and losses. <laughs> we come in, we we attach ourselves, and then inevitably we're going to have to lose. Now, the 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 thing is how we deal with that. Yeah. And um, uh, Kubler Ross has has a, a wonderful series. First of all, uh, we deny it; that it's ever going to happen. It won't happen to me. Uh, it certainly won't happen tomorrow. See? Uh, uh, and then um, there is uh, uh, an inevitability of facing something. I can't remember the actual stages, but they all mix into one eventually. Is that we bargain? We bargain with life. You know, <laughs> if you're if you're suffering from something, you go, well, look, look. If I come out of this, I promise. I I'll, promise I'll, I'll be different you see I, I promise I'll, I'll change and I'll do this and sometimes that bargaining is like bargaining with death mm. um, there's an old rule actually there's an old law to do with dreaming which comes to mind is that sometimes we if, if you experience death coming through your door in your bedroom and um, he goes to the head of the bed mm -hmm then you can bargain with him. But if he comes to the foot of your bed? But if he comes to the foot of the bed, he is saying to you, you're going to go be six feet under. That's why we say it's feet first. And yeah. six feet under is the name of that series, by the way, that I've just remembered from uh, America, uh, which is the, one of the greatest series to come out. Alan Ball initiated it. And it's all about death. The father, the father who is the head of a funeral service, um, dies on the first episode. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it completely shakes up the entire family dynamic mm -hmm. of which we are also fated to experience. Yes. Because we live within that. That's very much our fate. How we deal with it is what we talked about yesterday. How we deal with the archetypal dynamics. We have an element of choice, but we can't choose all of that. And, and, and the whole series is about how the family... It brings up... Death brings up the whole family dynamics, the problems, the difficulties um the, the the identity problems and we've got one is a teenager one is a long lost son one was a gay guy who hadn't come out we got the mother who believes that you know her entire role in life was as a mother she's got to let go of that and yeah. and every episode then starts with the death right and, yeah. and and it's like bang 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 and we're taken into the mortuary and, and what happens and and uh you know the death services funeral services but it's a it's a real telling of how death affects people, how do you experience it, and uh, it's great transformative power to live when we've got life to really live, um, because eventually it it's going to it's going to end. So um, anyway, that's what that's what that that <laughs> brings up in me, and and we come back to life cycles, necessity and um, the meaning of it as, as it comes into our life. So after, after, after the bargaining phase, <laughs> usually comes anger. There's nothing we can do about it. We have a temper tantrum. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> then, then, then we may go into, at any stage, a depression. Mm. And depression in this level of life is the mourning of our regrets. That's because we always regret the morning of loss, the morning of the fact. But, but after that, what Kubler-Ross found out with patients, and she did this, you know, 30 years of work with patients, she found these stages, they all work together in a way, and sometimes in a different sequence, was that eventually an acceptance that this must happen. This must happen. The, the necessity of life has taken a course in this life, and it must happen. I, I have an argument with that word acceptance, because I think some some things losses are totally unacceptable, especially when they're newborn babies or 
they suffer leukemia as age three. I've I've seen people in therapy whose mother, mothers come into therapy and their children have that. It's very difficult. You can't simply placate them with some ideas about death. It mm -hmm. has to go through these stages. But the last stage, I would rather change from acceptance into accommodation. There's an accommodation that you can make with the inevitability of life. And life is Thanatos and Eros, uh, birth, and uh, and uh, beauty and going all the experiences and the inevitability of letting that go yeah fantastic i think as uh, you know it's really amazing that you you started that whole uh, whole talk with the irrevocability of of hades right of, of his absolutely. Lord, of his he's Lord. a god yeah, absolutely and then on the opposite end of it uh, with that final stage of, of, you know, what happens of, like you said, not acceptance, but um, accommodating things, which really, I mean, if you look at yeah. the card, mm -hmm. so you have uh, the king there, he's basically done, he's on the floor, he's out for the count. Uh, so there's the sun. His crown is on the floor. Uh, That's interesting. In the death card, the king actually represents the ego, right? The ego can't survive this concept of, mm -hmm. Death is going to get me. Uh, then you have the the Pope, the priest who's still standing, who tries to make sense of it through his belief system, uh, you know, and in that way, but in that respect, still fighting against this idea of total acceptance of, of what is, right, of what is inevitable. Then you have the maiden, who is actually the same woman that's on the strength card, and she's kneeling before death, you know, to say like, okay, well, I'll, I'll come to it and I'll, I'll kind of do that. But she would be the one that is uh, pleading, so to speak, because she's got her head slightly turned away. Uh, so again, really, really... The bargaining. Yeah, yeah. The bargaining that you mentioned, which I thought was fantastic. And then the final one that you see is uh, a small child holding some flowers with arms open. Mm. And this is the, the soul, right? Interestingly enough, in, in the Greek language, as you, you yourself know, um, in my family, they, if they say my child, they say sihimo, my soul, right? That's what they would call their child. Um, so I find that really interesting. And you're, I've always believed that your soul is like a child. It's the purest essence of who you are. It's completely accepting of what is considered natural law and it allows for everything. So interesting then that it's the only one that kind of just i got some flowers give me a hug i know what you're here for but you know that's the the pure essence of self ego obliterated accepting of death on a horse come to claim oh it, there's such a lot in that card first of all he's on a horse uh which uh, but he's on a horse which the horse often represents the libido the instinctual mm. forces of life and he's on top of it and he he has a he has a, a caput mortuum, the, the skull, which often represents <coughs> uh, 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 death. But what I liked is I didn't realize that the crown was on the, on the floor and the crown is a representation of individual sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And this links it interestingly enough into the political situation at the moment. Yeah. Um, sovereignty being um, that we are sovereign. We have a, an independent sun-like experience of ourselves and that that has to be given up. So the crown's fallen. There isn't any sovereignty. There is, you know, it represents a death of some kind. Yeah. Um, uh, the innocent, uh, unless we become like children, we don't enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a very old Christian um, uh, teaching, and yet it is, it's something to do with, with, the, with the, uh, the acceptance of experience itself as opposed to reflected experience of the adult. Yes. The, the, the other thing about, um, I think belief systems are constructs. They, of course they're constructs because how can they not be? They should be seen comparatively. Um, you know, because every culture in the world has their, their death construct, mm -hmm. their funeral rites, whether that's burning or embalming or, or burying or one way or another, you know, <clears throat> um, and or, or, or given us out to the vultures on the highest mountain that we can climb. Uh, there's all kind of different symbolic areas, but these are all uh, attempts to um, not placate the well. Some some placate the ego, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, when we pass over, we're going to uh, move into this territory. But some are an attempt to bridge the gap between belief and experience. And yeah. that, that, that some belief systems can, can help people to um, uh, overcome yeah. their fears. They're not, to be taken, they're not to be taken away from people. Whereas a, a kind of more pure kind of experience um, is, is, a, is a kind of soul acceptance, I suppose. Yeah. And, and, and relates back to initiation, back to shamanism, mm -hmm. which is about accepting the process of death, not on an emotional level. I say, I mentioned about accommodating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. But true acceptance would be to say, oh, this is just a, this is just part of the life cycle in me. It's, to, it's, we're, we're in October, you know, we're, we're in the decaying uh, period. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Not with the, not with the joy, but nevertheless, that it goes along with the horse. Death is on the horse. Death is on the libido. Yes. And maybe that's a suggestion that um, death can ride um, the horse. I mean, the horse is very much characteristic of Sagittarius, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, or the, it's half man, half beast, half I, man. I, I know, but half something horse. to do with the, the carrying the libido, that, 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 that even in death, maybe, there is a life. Mm. That, that, that it's a profound symbol, that, on, on the horse. Others represent death as a scythe you know the grim reaper that that kind of thing and uh, as in the uh, there's a series uh, terry pratchett um i i love it. i love some of that it's too complicated for me to go but terry pratchett you know one of them i think it's the first or second books he he goes through life and and and, and death decides to have a break <laughs> right so i'm not doing it anymore yeah i've had enough <laughs> I've, I've had enough you know so you go along with this like, now de 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 death hands in his notice <laughs> de de death dies yeah. i mean it's a, it's, it's a comical but but it's, it's a deeply imaginable what happens with that yeah you see no cycles no cycles and so the death of demeter you see the, where where demeter's daughter is taken into the underworld that is the birth of the seasons the four seasons and we're back to four and thirteen yeah 13 being the the other thing after the completion 12 mm -hmm. is is a completion 12 signs of the zodiac or 12 you know 12 you know, all of that 13 is what happens after that complete cycle yeah so um yeah. They, they do they, they do measure up uh, in that way and uh I, I just think even even talking about it evokes it but it will belief systems would some are placatory um, responses of the psyche to try and understand death. Yeah. Fair enough. Existential reality, um, existential therapists say it's one of their big five. <coughs> in order to experience life fully, the beauty of it, the, the, the pleasure of it, the interest in it, and to fulfill your own purpose, you have to accept the inevitability of death. Yeah. It's one of their big five. Mm. not just as a as, as a, not just religious some of them tend to go further and say all religion is is also a kind of attempt to create a belief system which yeah. you don't have to experience <laughs> in order to control in life. order to control the fear of it now there's an argument to be made in that but actually i i i don't think that's the the end of it i mean shamanism has a lot more to say than existentialism but um uh, this is all open territory when a card of death turns up in your reading. Yeah. Um, to, Sometimes uh, it represents and, and the Pluto the transits. You make you know, the Pluto transits for astrologers. Some people get very frightened of this archetype of experience that is that they're going to experience. But mm. they doesn't we must say it doesn't have to be death death as a physical thing. It could mean the death of uh, some level of life in you some attitude some old attitude which has lived its course mm -hmm. is at the end of its its time and it has to go yeah no very much i totally agree I mean, with david you. cameron let, let me I, I just made a note uh, david cameron right has uh, his son at 15 libra mm -hmm. his son is at 15 libra in 2016 pluto is exactly square it oh wow okay this is a lot to do with Brexit, see? Yeah. And, and he had to resign. 
Nick Clegg is the same. 16 Capricorn. Pluto was exactly conjunction, his son. That was the end of his political career. Right? Margaret Thatcher. Um, when Pluto came to her son, that was the beginning of her political career. She came, she came into power when Pluto could join her son. So she was she, kind of marked from the beginning, really. Right, well, <laughs> Pluto hit her bars. She took control of the Conservative Party, had a battle on her hands. Pluto hits the sun by transit. She becomes the leader of the Conservative Party, goes through a war, not long afterwards, 1983, 1982, right? And after the war, she was, she was victorious. And she became rule Britannia, you know, and all that. And, she, and, and Pluto was in Scorpio at that time. She decimated a lot of the old forms ruthlessly. Then eventually it moved into Scorpio. It conjoined her ascendant and her Saturn. And that's when she was stabbed in the back. That's when she was betrayed. That's when she lost her power. She went through a death. It's very interesting, Pluto transits, when they come, that you have to experience it in some way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm kind of dreading mine. I've been keeping an eye on the conjunction that's coming up. because it's. Oh, you, so you're, you're, you're part, oh, so all of this uh, theoretical uh, attempt at a, at a balanced view of death, it doesn't stop those fears, does it? You're dreading it. Oh, I, went through, I went through mine 2011, <laughs> excuse me, yeah. 2012. Pluto opposed sun. But, I, I mean, even, even that, I think, is, is something that I've looked at and kind of just accepted that, you know, what it's going to be, what it's going to be. Um, but the the human mind, and especially if you've got an imaginative, an imaginative mind, you tend to... So, and it really is. It actually reminds me of a few tarot cards because sometimes what your mind yeah. uses compared to what the actual event is, is hor like your mind makes it this awful, awful thing. And then when it happens, you're like, oh, okay. Well, it's not great and it does suck, but actually I can deal with that. That's fine. Mm. But what we do to ourselves in, in the, the mind of it all, really interesting. I've got a whole bunch of uh, death cards here in front yeah, of me. Yeah, please. I pulled them up from all the decks. I'd really like to no, know. I, I, I must say that the, 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 the death card... Uh, is is surely linked to various others, like the hangman, for example, is yep. the, is the voluntary submission of ourselves to a different point of view, <laughs> probably the opposite point of view, and and it's like like Prometheus forced on a rock, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, we must we must um, sometimes be chained up. So so it, it it's all working towards death. You know, the tower is the is the destruction of an old form of thinking, and that can appear. As, I mean, it's the death of the form at the top of the structure, somebody falling off. Yeah. If his elevated power, if it's his elevation, yeah. you know, his, his ego is right at the top of the, I'm in control, and then this lightning bolt cracks it open. Wow. That's a very Uranian kind of death. You yeah. know, so, so it's, it, it, but, but this is a more pure initiate. I think the death card is a more, in a, 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 an attempt by life to, to, to transform your, ver your very Weltanschauung, your very, that was a German word that Freud used, meaning your point of view, your point of view about life, not just about particular bits, but about the whole of life, and a chance for you to open up to a spiritual developmental growth uh, uh, where it means something. It's not just a change of belief systems. Yeah, no, for it's sure. A real conversion because, of um, one, one way of being in life to another way of being I, okay i just wanted to make that yeah, no that and it, it's true and it really is there is a there is a crossover point and i, I mean i've seen in many readings i've had a deaf card come up and, and people are like oh you know is it somebody that i know and it's sometimes yeah. you know there's been moments where i've wanted to say to somebody well actually it's worse than that you know it's it's not the death of a person it's a death of something that you really hold very dear that has served its purpose and now needs to perish you know, that's when, when it gets really kind of, uh, not difficult, but that's when it gets quite tender because, oh, right, okay, well, you know, nobody's going to die, so that means everything's okay. Well, actually, the fact that your job that you've been in for the last 20 years is about to come to an end and come crashing down in a really huge way. Yeah. Be a, do you know what I mean? So it's yes, still it death. And, it's, and I think those are the, this is the reason it's important to open up these dialogues. I mean, some interesting ones. This one, not necessarily one of my favourite ones. It's got. Could the, you hold it closer? Yeah, it's got the. Uh, the hold it closer, screen. right up to the camera. 
Ah, right. So is that the unicorn or is that just a... No, it's just the, the white horse, but on a shield. Uh, okay, it, it, it looks more like, um, uh, you know, House Angels yeah. to me than, than anything else. But I, I like the horse underneath. Very similar to the, uh, to the weight deck, you know, the horse is underneath. Absolutely. So we have, we have Thanatos at the top and, of course, Eros, the life force underneath. Uh, could you hold that one closer? This one. This is the angel of death, isn't it? Yeah, cradling the, the baby again, that whole idea of new life, uh, you know, when one thing ends, another but thing. But are those eyes or those peacock feathers? No, they're eyes. Well, that's very similar to peacock feathers as well. Yeah. Um, the panoply of life, that which we look at. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, then we've got, obviously, the Rider weight one, which everybody knows. Uh, to some point. Uh, this one's quite an interesting one. Uh, death there as a, a pregnant, you know, you said this whole idea of putting yes. death on the, the feminine energy, so to speak. Um, yeah. So that one's really interesting that it's... Well, that's, that's interesting that it's pregnant with possibility. Um, she, st she has the side there, so it's, it's a bit of a confu not confused image, there's an amalgamation. Of, 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 of that you know that when a mother becomes a mother she can no longer be a a, a daughter <laughs> oh wow that's, like that, 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 that's the initiation on the feminine part and it we don't have to have a physical uh birth although i think that's very special to women and it's a particular kind of initiation um uh, uh, you know, our children can be children of the mind, children of the spirit, children of the heart. They don't have to be physical children and are equally as valid. But we all have children. We all have a fifth house. So yeah. that, so it might represent that, that um, pregnancy and eventual delivery is, is an initiation. It's yeah. an initiation to a new life. So I like that symbolism. It's mm -hmm. quite feminine. But then she also has the, the scythe, yeah. which is the Saturn side of things, that after this, things will not be the same. Yeah. The corn is going to be cut down, which again is a harvesting, it's seasonal, it's to do with Demeter, and it's to do with the loss of Persephone, the daughter, and mm -hmm. it very much linked in with that card. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I, I am so drawn to the weight image, <laughs> but I do like these other ones. Yeah, no, I, it's just, it's really nice to see that they have like common themes. Yeah, um, yeah. And, but they draw out different aspects of it. Pregnancy, yeah. uh, uh, the birth of an individual, the birth of something means that uh, something is, it's the end of a cycle, do you see? Again, that nine month moonly cycle, uh, the nine month pregnancy, and then it comes, it, it comes out and thinks things are changed. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, women who, who have been through uh, the birth of their child uh, that is a, a very very special a very very unique uh, experience yeah and um some of them have psychosis afterwards and uh, i'm grateful i'm not a woman yeah me too you know, I, 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 and i don't say that with, 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 any, <laughs> with any problem i just say that I, I i um the the archetypal feminine is the experience of the um of the, the embodiment of the spirit. Mm. It's not only that, because we also have the figure of Sophia, which is the, the, which is the wisdom to come through this facet of birth and cycles and seasons and so on. So the, 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 that feminine element of, of spirituality, is, but, but it includes earth. It's not just the, 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 the sky gods of understanding and rationality and uh, mm -hmm. metaphysics. No, it's the actual experience of embodied life yeah. so i like that with that card the the imagery yeah it's beautiful um I, richard as always i Have could run out of time talk to you about these things forever and i'm sure there is uh, way more um i would like to ask you as well uh, so next month if we can go on to the um temperance card as it will be sagittarius season ah yes temperance right Right, uh, which is great. So next, yeah, because we come into Sagittarius season at the end of sort of November. Mm, mm. Uh, so it would be great for us to, you know, we've started this at the pagan new year, so to speak, mm. you know, for the 31st of October. Yeah. 
and you know this whole eighth house thing that we've got going on at the moment the sun yep. in uh, and it would be really nice to continue this throughout the whole major arcana so next time we can look at uh, Sagittarius and temperance and you know see where we go from there and how it develops well I think <clears throat> to sum up um, particularly in tarot readings and mm -hmm. and Pluto transits we've been talking about the archetype is the same yeah the archetype is the beginning of one thing and the end of another yes it and such processes are necessary mm -hmm. how we encounter them is a whole psychological uh, uh, process the, the fact that we have to encounter them is um, I irrevocable uh, and it will all and we can go two ways we can defend deny get angry try to bargain with it or eventually you begin to accept it in some way but that acceptance inevitably initiates a new kind of knowledge mm. not just knowledge at the head level a knowledge of being Martin, can, Martin Heidegger said <clears throat> that it's only death that, that, that wakes us up from a mindfulness of, you know, a kind of set way of doing the automaticity to, to uh, uh, an aliveness and awakeness. And I think that that, that underlies the symbolism. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. He says coffee. <laughs> the idea, um, <coughs> it was important to do this. Uh, and, you know, I'm really, really grateful that you agreed to. And thank you so much for all of the knowledge that you brought um, and all of the examples and the information. I think what I <coughs> was... Um, it's certainly the end, because my... Yeah, my it was really let people know uh, that, yes, death is a natural accompaniment to life. If you have life, then at some point you are going to experience <coughs> the end of that. The death card uh, <coughs> a bad rap when it comes to tarot. Uh, the you know Scorpio as a sign gets a bad rap as well. You know with a lot of the the modern stuff that's come through. And I think what was really important was that we open up a dialogue about a subject that is uh, you know considered taboo, um, but do it sensitively. I mean Venus is in Scorpio at the moment, so you know perfect time really to you know to smooth some of the edges off so to speak. Um, but it, yeah, I really feel like it was important. I'm really looking forward to <coughs> the rest of the Zodiac with you. Um, and again, thank you so much for everything that you brought to the talk. I really, really appreciate it. Pleasure.